what I'm about to tell you is going to completely change the way you think about the notes you hear in music forever. Actually, come back in here a moment. You may already know about this, of course, in which case, meh. So I'm going to start off by playing a single string on my guitar, the A string. Now, as you may already know, this string is vibrating between two fixed points, the nut up here and the bridge down here. And it's vibrating 110 times per second, or at 110 hertz, as we say. Let's leave that number up here. We're going to need that later. Now, as well as doing this, it's also actually vibrating at twice that rate or frequency, at 220 hertz and when it does that it produces a sound called a harmonic now you were largely unaware of that sound when i played the string earlier on so i've made this clever eq curve up here to isolate that harmonic so that you can hear it let's play the string again now it's still the note of a but it's much higher. When we double a frequency, we call that an octave. That note of A is one octave higher than the initial note that you were aware of. Now, the first sound that was produced at 110 hertz was also a harmonic, but we normally refer to it as the fundamental, because it's fundamental to the sound of this note. And because the second sound that we created was at twice the rate of of the fundamental, we call it the second harmonic. It doesn't stop there though. When we played this note earlier, a third sound was created called the third harmonic, and that was at three times the rate of the fundamental, at 330 hertz. I've also isolated that with this frequency curve so that you can hear it now. Now, all of these sounds combine together to create what we call the timbre or timbre or timbre or however you pronounce it in your part of the world, the sound or character of the note that we were playing, the instrument that we were playing it on as well. But it doesn't stop there. This phenomena happens naturally and also produces fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc., etc., into infinity harmonics. And this series of harmonics, which all produce different notes, is called the harmonic series. So I must admit, when I first heard about this, my mind was blown. So do me a favor, if your mind is blown during the course of this video, take a note of what time in the video that happens and put that timestamp in the comments down below for me, if for no other reason than to educate me about the lengths I have to go to to impress you. Now we're still going to be listening to the guitar sound and we're still going to be playing the note of A, but this time on a virtual instrument. <laughs> Now it's not a fake guitar, it's actually a sample or a recording of a real guitar, okay? And we're going to be looking at this in FabFilter using the Spectrum Analyzer. And as I play this note, I want you to take note of the spikes which occur and then gradually die away. Do you see all those spikes there? Let's have a look again. Those are the harmonics which are being produced in the harmonic series. Now, as we saw earlier, the cool thing we can do is actually filter some of these out. So we can just listen to the fundamental or first harmonic, which sounds like this. Yep. And then we can listen to the second harmonic. Sounds like that. Still the same note, but an octave higher. Yeah, have a listen again. And then we can have a listen to the third harmonic, which sounds like this. And again. Now I could have gone ahead and filtered out all of the harmonics up through the series, but I actually only need the first three right now for a little quiz we're going to do. Get your ears ready. So there's three parts to this simple quiz, and in each part, I'm going to be playing one of those harmonics that we isolated with the filter just a moment ago. You won't be able to see which filter I'm using, so you'll just have to use your ears. But as a quick reminder, let's listen to each of those three harmonics. So the first harmonic, or the fundamental, is sounding like this. The second, like this and the third like this. 
and obviously I'm not going to be using them in that order. So let's start off with part one of the test. Which harmonic am I playing now? And again. Okay, part two of the test. Which harmonic am I playing now? And finally, part three of the test, which harmonic am I playing now? Now, I bet you're feeling pretty smug, yeah? I bet you feel pretty confident that you got all three of those right, especially that last one, the really high one, yeah? It's obviously the third harmonic. And you're right, it is the third harmonic, but I'm afraid to say I tricked you because it isn't the third harmonic of the guitar anymore. Instead, it's the third harmonic of this. The same note, but on a piano. And that's because all pitched instruments produce the same harmonics from the harmonic series. Let's dive into that a little bit further. So now I've got three instruments loaded up, the guitar, the piano and a cello. Now if I isolate, say, this time the third harmonic um, with each of those, we can listen to the guitar, the piano and the cello. And you'll notice they all sound pretty much the same. One of the minor differences is to do with the attack and decay times. Obviously, some instruments um, have a much sharper attack, like the guitar and the piano, and some a slower attack, like the cello here. And the decay times are different as well. But they still share the same harmonics as you heard there with the third harmonic. But these are all stringed instruments. What about wind instruments, for example? Well, let's have a listen to these two. And this one. The first one was actually a tuba. And the second one, a bassoon. And yet they still shared the same harmonics from the harmonic series that the stringed instruments did. So you may ask, well, if they all share the same harmonics, then why don't they actually sound the same? And the answer to that is, is that they all share the same harmonics, but at different levels. OK, let's have a look at some of these. Have a look at the guitar. You can see a lot of the lower harmonics are a lot louder there with the guitar. And if we compare that to the bassoon, you can see those middle harmonics are much louder than the fundamental even, yeah? Have a look again. And it's this sort of combination of the harmonics at different levels which really contribute to the sound of the instrument. Let's explore this a little bit further using a synth. So using something called additive synthesis, we're gonna create our own timbre by generating harmonics on top of a fundamental, okay? And for this, I'm using pigments from Arturia. So we're gonna start off with the fundamental. This time it's gonna be the note of C. We can hear that sine wave there. And using this control here, we can add in harmonics from the harmonic series, or as they're sometimes called, like they are here, partials, okay? So let's just gradually add a few in and listen to the sound and how it changes. And did you notice there, as I add them in, they actually form the sound of a C major chord or just any major chord, okay? Have a listen again. I'm just gonna add in those first six. And although you can hear the individual notes of that chord, when I go ahead and actually use this sound on the synthesizer for a melody, you're no longer aware of that kind of chord which is created by the harmonics and you're mostly focused on the fundamental. Your brain identifies the note mostly according to the fundamental, okay? So let's go ahead and add some more partials. So I've added a few more there. They're no longer forming a major chord, okay? And you'll notice they're getting closer and closer together. We'll add a few more. 
And the higher we get and the closer they get together, the more kind of harsh the sound becomes, okay? So that's the basis of adding those partials or, or harmonics here. But let's just mess around with the distribution a little bit, okay? I'm gonna start off by using this tilt control here. And what we're gonna do with that is make some of those higher harmonics a little bit quieter. And you'll notice, although they're still present, the sound has a much softer kind of tone to it, okay? Um, if we make them louder again, we've got that sort of harder tone. Now, we're sort of adjusting them across the range there, but we can sort of notch out a few of them using some filters with this synthesis. I've prepared a filter here. I'm gonna use this depth control to gradually fade it in, and you'll see that the distribution changes again a little bit here. Have a listen to the sound. Yeah, here I'm kind of knocking out some of the alternate harmonics which have been created. And as you can see, this forms the basis of the timbre of our instruments. Some instruments, like percussive instruments, don't necessarily make use of the harmonic series in the same way as the pitched instruments that we looked at today. As well as this, some of the notes which are produced in the harmonic series don't quite line up in terms of frequency with the notes we normally use in the 12 equal temperament system that we generally use in Western music. To find out more about this, I've provided some links in the description down below so that you can do some further reading. Now, harmonics are also naturally produced in some of the hardware that we use in the studio. To find out more about that, I think you should watch this video right here.